Back in the day in the US, when you could walk into any bank with this and walk out with this, this is the tool to hold government's toes to the fire. And what real gold backing a currency, as long as it's convertible, that requires fiscal responsibility. And what we just saw happen in Zimbabwe yet again cannot happen. That's why they took us off the gold standard to begin with, because they wanted to inflate away the value of the currency in an invisible inflation tax so that the 1% could make a whole lot more money. This is that income and wealth inequality. And all we really have to do is say no. Zong dives deeper into Zimbabwe's current economic crisis as a case study for what can happen when governments abuse their printing presses. The Zimbabwean government recently devalued the ZIG by 44% which means citizens now need far more currency to purchase the same goods they bought just days earlier. To put this into perspective, if someone had $1,000 in Zig yesterday, today they would need 25,000 Zig to maintain the same purchasing power. This devaluation has had a catastrophic effect on the lives of Zimbabwean citizens. Savings held in local currency have essentially been wiped out, with the value of salaries slashed by nearly half. Meanwhile, interest rates have soared from 20% to 35%, adding further strain to an already struggling population. Despite the government's promises, the introduction of the ZIG has done nothing to solve the country's economic problems, largely because once confidence in a currency is lost, it is almost impossible to regain. What's particularly concerning, Zong notes, is that the situation in Zimbabwe is not an isolated incident. It is a chilling reminder of what can happen anywhere in the world, including in developed countries like the United States. The only difference between inflation and hyperinflation, she emphasizes, is the speed at which it occurs. Zong stresses that the only way to protect ourselves from the rampant devaluation of fiat currencies is through sound money. Currencies that are backed by physical assets like gold and silver. These precious metals have been used as money for thousands of years and cannot be printed at will by governments. They hold their value across time and geography, making them a universal form of wealth preservation. Now we'll show you the best clips of the latest interview. But first hit the like button, smash the subscribe button and turn on notifications so you do not miss out our daily recaps to ensure that inflation expectations remain well anchored as well as dissipate current inflationary pressures. Wait a minute. The vow, the promise was that they would not print more money than whatever gold they held in deep storage and other currencies. But you might recall, as we've been following this story all along, I couldn't ever find out the specifics. So let's move forward with this because frankly, the lie has been revealed. If you cannot convert the currency into the physical gold and take it out of the system, they can always lie to you. And that's exactly what they've been doing. So panic as Zig is devalued. Well, a lot of the population didn't even uh, convert it yet, but let's, let's see what happens to the man on the street. The Zimbabwean local currency called the Zig has been officially devalued by 44%. That means that they printed a whole bunch of more Zig to do that devaluation because this is the tool that they have. And the only difference, the only difference between inflation and hyperinflation is the speed of that inflation, but they're not in hyperinflation yet because they only devalued at 44% and officially hyperinflation is 50%. I'm pretty sure the citizens did not like that. But they have moved interest rates from 20% to 35%. I don't know, you borrowing at 20%? Come on. This means that if you wanted to buy US $1,000 worth of Zig yesterday, you needed 14,000 Zig. 
but today you need 25,000 zigs. So it takes more dollars, Zimbabwe dollars, to buy the same thing. Hmm. Who is going to carry that major exchange rate burden? It is you. That is the huge cost of state corruption and the looting of public funds using the central bank. It punishes you. And if you think that is just relegated to places like Zimbabwe, you really need to think again because the only difference between inflation and hyperinflation is the speed of that inflation. How would you feel if you woke up tomorrow and instead of a hundred bucks in the bank, you had 58, but guess what? Your salary didn't change and your debt didn't change. Citizens, economists, and trade unions have voiced their outrage, accusing the government of worsening the already dire economic situation, which of course the new currency was supposed to fix, but it didn't because once confidence is lost, it is almost impossible to regain. The devaluation, which saw the official exchange rate to the US dollar plummet has effectively wiped out nearly half the value of salaries and savings that are held in local currency. Guess what you guys, this is local currency. This is my, my what is it? 10 trillion Zimbabwe dollar note that has no value. But guess what? This is sound money currency. This is sound money currency. They can't do that. This is universal currency. This is not local currency, but it's good everywhere and anywhere in the world. Need to really keep that in mind. And what are they saying? The public is going, wait, the government must adjust the zig salaries following the currency devaluation. You know, I think it's really interesting that for a, for a little while, citizens in Zimbabwe could buy the one ounce gold coins. We've talked about this, right? Well, who can afford that? Just the 1%, just the wealthy. So they got out of the way. When they issued the Zig, all of a sudden, you couldn't get a physical one ounce gold coin anymore because what did you have to worry about? We promise that we are not going to print more than the gold we have in deep storage, but to try and ferret that information out, even on the central bank website, virtually impossible. Don't we have an increase in gold reserves at the, this is at the central bank in Zimbabwe? Hasn't the international gold price reached at all time high? And what should be the impact on the exchange rate on our gold backed currency? Hmm, where are the calculations that were done at the launch of the ZIG? I kept asking that, I've asked that to you, right? If you don't hold it, you don't own it. And if you can't convert it, you have no power. We need to take our power back. We need sound money. That is the battle that we're all facing. I don't care where you are in the world. We all have the same issues with government abuse of the printing press because they don't have any more tools. Do you want to be directly in that line of fire? Or do you want to get the Hades out and hold your purchasing power? If you do not have a strategy in place and you don't have it executed, you scan that, that, uh, what is that called again? The what? The QR code, sorry, you know, all this technology, but scan that technology. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm really excited about this. And you can probably tell because this is something we've been talking about for, well, God, I've been talking about Zimbabwe since 2006. This is now the sixth iteration, the sixth iteration of a new currency. But insanity is doing the same thing and expecting different results. And then as I was scrolling, I found this and I thought, I mean, I'm getting chills. Yeah, because what does it say? 
But what can I do? I am just one person, said seven billion people. Come together in community. Let's have a quiet, peaceful revolution. Just by becoming your own central bank and demanding sound money. If enough of us do this in the world, we will have a shot at commanding a seat at the table in the new currency. And if I'm sitting there on your behalf, then I'm going to demand that it is convertible. Because Zong passionately calls on viewers to take action now before it's too late. She argues that by holding onto fiat currency and not converting it into physical gold or silver, we are essentially agreeing to let governments continue their irresponsible fiscal policies. She reminds us that this is not just a Zimbabwean problem. It is happening globally. The US, China, and other major economies are also facing the consequences of reckless money printing, and it's only a matter of time before inflation accelerates into hyperinflation. Her message is clear. We need to become our own central banks by holding physical assets that governments cannot devalue. She encourages viewers to develop a strategy for preserving their wealth and to execute that strategy now. As she says, if you don't hold it, you don't own it. By converting fiat currency into gold and silver, we can take our power back from the government and protect ourselves from the invisible tax of inflation. Lynette Zong warns that what's happening in Zimbabwe is not a unique event. It has happened before in other countries and could happen again, even in the United States. She mentions that the U.S. has experienced significant inflationary episodes three times in the past, and the pattern is repeating itself. The only difference Zong emphasizes is the speed at which inflation occurs. The end of a currency's life cycle is marked by a rapid loss of purchasing power, and Zong believes we are nearing that point for many global currencies. She urges viewers to understand that the current system is designed to benefit the wealthy, while the average person suffers from the consequences of inflation. By converting fiat currency into tangible assets like gold and silver, we can protect ourselves and demand fiscal responsibility from our governments. Back in the day in the U.S., when you could walk into any bank with this and walk out with this, this is the tool to hold government's toes to the fire. And what real gold backing a currency, as long as it's convertible, that requires fiscal responsibility. And what we just saw happen in Zimbabwe yet again cannot happen. That's why they took us off the gold standard to begin with, because they wanted to inflate away the value of the currency in an invisible inflation tax so that the 1% could make a whole lot more money. This is that income and wealth inequality. And all we really have to do is say no. And all we have to do to say no is convert our garbage fiat that they do control into physical gold and silver that is used in every single sector of the global economy. It is global money. This is local money. All of these, local money, local money. Easy to inflate away its value. And, and if they do it slow enough, like that 2% inflation target, you're volunteering, you're working your wealth, and you don't even realize it. But if they do it overnight, like they just did again in Zimbabwe, you know it. Why aren't we out there complaining? But one more time. Because, you know, I always look in the mirror and I go, if not me, who? And if not now, when? Well, I'm telling you, it's all of us because what can I do? I'm just one person. 
said 7 billion people. I think that there are now a little bit more than 8 billion people in the world. We have a voice if we come together. Join this community. Give us a like, leave lots and lots of comments, have this conversation because that's what helps the algorithm share this information. And this information is critical for all of us to know. All of us. Because the whole point of this real time experiment in attempting to get that confidence back, it's happening. Coming to a theater near you. It isn't, oh, this is Zimbabwe. That could never happen here. Yes, it has three times. Three times it's happened here. Just not in yours and my lifetime. And they're doing the same thing. Look at the purchasing power chart. The only difference, I, I know, I'm sorry, I'm being so redundant, but I really need you to get this. You need to get this. The only difference between inflation and hyperinflation is the speed of that inflation. And if stock markets go down, if real estate markets go down, if bar bond markets go down, that's deflation. And there's only one way to fight deflation and that's with inflation. And we had Fed Chair Powell, oh, now he's being hawkish, he's trying to walk. I mean, it's just, it's just such garbage. This is the very end of the currency's life cycle, get ready. Click that link, get your strategy in place, get it executed, become your own central bank, join the sound money movement wherever you are in the world. Let's make this happen. And maybe not for ourselves. I mean, I'm old, you know, but my children, my grandchildren, your children, your grandchildren, you, why, why is this okay? If you stay in intangibles, then you're agreeing to this. And if you say, oh, no, I'm not agreeing, but you don't do anything about it, you're agreeing to it. How many times can you be lied to when you do not know the truth? Do you recognize the truth when you see it? Because it doesn't matter if it's in Zimbabwe or the US or China, take your pick, take your pick. They're all, we are all in the same boat. Here, my friends, these are your life preservers. Mm -hmm.